So this, uh, we're going to start making um, some digital puppets, and I just kind of want to discuss a little bit about, you know, the reasoning and, and uh, the the, uh, the functionality and things. Um, so, uh, you know, in the old school animation, um, you know, you would create basically, uh, in traditional animation, you would basically just draw every frame of the animation, and there'd be a lot of different processes that you'd have to go through that. So this is an animation I made uh, in college. Um, called Falling Squirrel, because it's a, a flying squirrel that can't fly. Um, but this took over 5,000 pieces of paper um, in order for me to draw, right? So I did, this, I did this old, old school. I didn't even do it on, uh, well, I mean, we did use computers, but um, but yeah, so it was all paper-based. Uh, so obviously, that's a very slow process. Um, personally, I do think it looks the nicest because it's, uh, you know, every, it, it, it's more dynamic and you're drawing every frame and it's fluid and what have you. Um, but it definitely is a lot more um, time consuming than you might see in um, other animations. So uh, it, it's just it's it's not as efficient. Let's put it that way. So another type of animation that is done is cutout. So uh, in the past, a cutout animation, this is actually done in Adobe Animate, um, but it was back when it was Flash and wasn't quite as good as it is now. But uh, basically, you create uh, pieces. And each piece gets bent and turned and rotated, right? So um, old, old school animation, um, cutout would mean literally cutouts. You would just cut out uh, out of pieces of paper and then you would just rotate them, right? Um, now we do it digitally. Um, in fact, actually, if I were to ask you what the first feature length animated film is, you'd probably say, oh, it's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. But you would also be wrong. <laughs> so most people think it's that one. It was actually... Um, Prince Ahmed uh, by Lonnie Reiniger. Uh, so it was a solo person that animated, and it was a female, which uh, there's a big history of basically it being a very male-dominated. It's it's great now, but back in the day, it was very sexist like everything else was. Um, so, uh, you know, which was quite a feat. And I mean, it was feature-length too. So, and it's actually pretty well done. You might be able to find it on YouTube. I'd have to look, but um, that was cutout animation. Um, so there are some advantages. You don't have to drop your frame. It's basically like stop motion. Um, but now we can do cutout animation. Um, we do it digitally. So we'll just make pieces, right? And then we can animate them and move them. Um, if I were to ask you for a modern example of a um, uh, a modern example of cutout animation, you might say uh, South Park, right? Um, but you'd also be wrong. <laughs> so South Park is actually... Um, the original, original, when they first made it, it actually, they did use cutouts. They had a tabletop and they had a, a down shooter. Um, but it's actually done in Maya. It's in the same program we use for, um, oh yeah, here we go. I say it right here. <laughs> it's actually the same program we use inside of our program, uh, that we say that we use for like 3d animation and video games and stuff. And that's what we use at, at uh, Cecil as well. So anywho, uh, so cutout is another way. Um, one of the problems with cutout though, is it can be a little bit, um, you know, I, I did the best I could here, but it looks like cutout. It, it isn't as, 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 as dynamic, right? Um, something can look really flat and it depends on how far you go with it. Um, so now sort of the way that we do things is what we'll do with what I call like tradigital, where you do kind of a hybrid of traditional and cutout. So the idea is that you make puppets, um, but you'll notice like this puppet really only has just one arm, one head, right? And you might flip it, but that's all you have. Um, in traditional, they'll make these like puppets that are much more dynamic, where they have replaceable hands, and uh, you can rotate the head, and the head will like move around. They'll have like cutters where it like cuts out for like if they're looking to the side, it'll cut out of the mouth. Um, they're just they're a whole lot more dynamic. And if you've done three D animation, the uh, they have rigs that are very similar to what you would see in three D. Um, so it's sort of a little bit of both. And, you know, and also they'll sometimes do little hand-drawn pieces in between the puppet pieces. Most of your modern day um, TV series are going to be done this way. Even some feature length stuff is done this way. Uh, and it's get and it's gotten to the point, to be frank, some of it, the stuff that's well done, you can't even tell. It looks like traditional. It's really well done. Uh, but it's a lot of work. It takes a whole, you know, large team in order to make those things kind of... Um, uh, happen. So uh, in a lot of ways, this is probably the most preferred method because theoretically you could get something that looks dynamic, um, but it would be much more efficient. You can also leverage people's abilities. So you could have someone who's really good artist, but not an animator. So they could draw all the pieces. 
you could have somebody that's very good, like in a technical know-how, they could do the rigging. And then you could have um, people who are animators and then they could animate it, right? And so you're able to, to leverage different skill sets um, and have people specialize more specifically into things, uh, which is, you know, great. Um, so as far as like we're concerned, we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our character in a bunch of pieces, um, you know, clean them up. Then we'll make uh, each uh, piece into a symbol. We'll make it into some sort of hierarchy. Uh, and then you will um, animate it, okay? So uh, that's roughly how uh, that would work.